Guys, welcome back to the Vulcan deck match. This is a very short break, but that's because we are ready for the second match. Who do we have coming up here, Gibbler? Uh, we have Forsen versus Toyta, and uh, it's you know, kind of sad for me here. I, these are both players who, who, who've given me quite the beatdown in events recently. Forsen actually oh, is it? in the finals of the, uh, the Geico Brawl uh, just yesterday, and uh, Toyta actually knocked me out in the group stages of this very event. So... Uh, I don't know who I'm rooting for, but uh, I want kind of want them both to beat each other somehow. All right, cool, cool. Um, <laughs> well, I can understand a little bit of uh, you know recent memory coming into play here, Kibler. But I think uh, these guys will probably have more focused on it because we have fifty thousand dollars on the line here. So uh, there's a lot of money to be won by just being able to continue to advance. And the winner of this, I believe, should be going to play the uh, against Trump who then gets his spot into the semifinals and the grand finals. So consider us here in the round of six, so to speak, uh, before we go to the round of four and to uh, the finals for today, and ultimately the grand finals happening uh, in the future. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these guys have class-wise. It seems that uh, Forsen has Hunter, Warlock, Mage up against Hunter, Warlock... Oh, this is Mage 2. They just reworded it, so that way it confused me. All right, so... Then the same exact lineup here, but with Toyta, I expect to bring something a little bit different. He seems to be the kind of guy that likes Fane Death, that likes, you know, Demon Wrath, that likes these weird cards that no one really uses. Uh, and then somehow he claims it works on ladder and maybe even wins a, a game or two with it. I mean, Toyta was one of the, the qualifier winners here. Uh, Forsen was invited to the event. And uh, Toyta actually uh, surprised a lot of players, I think, in the group stages uh, with his deck choices. He actually played Priest. Uh, several of the of the weeks. I actually played against him and banned his priest because I was like, oh god, I don't know. All my rest <laughs> have a problem against this. Uh, and Forsen is someone who has uh, actually recently demonstrated a, a pretty uh, a pretty wide range of styles. Uh, when uh, Value Town went up against Forsen Boys in the Archon Team League uh, recently, uh, we actually saw uh, we were expecting Forsen to play very aggressive decks, but he actually uh, came out with both Freeze Mage and the Malagos Combo Warlock. So he uh, definitely has a wide range, so we could see some interesting stuff from him. Yeah, that's, that's what's something that people don't really value too much in Force, and I think versatility in playing decks is absolute must in order to be a top caliber player now. Um, you need to be able to not only be well-versed in how to face against decks, but also just unpredictable, because if you keep playing the same decks, you can easily get cornered in conquest mode. It's especially important in, in these league-style events, because players know who they're going up against uh, in any given week. And right. that can definitely, if, if you know someone has particular strong tendencies, you can definitely exploit that by how you construct your lineup. Certainly. And this is something that... I'm not sure how much Forsen pegged on Zatoida, but he really loves things like Tempo Mage. He was one of the first people to put Tempo Mage's first iterations out there on the tournament scene before Goblins and Gnomes was very popular, or sorry, became out, and then, you know, Tempo Forms of Mage started becoming more popular. It was to guys like Toyta and Lothar really trying to make it work back in the day, so it was very interesting to see how it's evolved, and he continues to be fond of that style. I mean, Tempo Mage is a deck that uh, has certainly had a bit of a resurgence since the availability of Flame Waker from Blackrock Mountain. Uh, it was a deck that, that kind of fell out of favor before that, but uh, gained a lot of additional power from the inclusion of that new card. One of the interesting, well. one of the interesting cards we see actually see in Toyta's hand here is Mechanical Yeti. Uh, mm -hmm. Generally, Piloted Shredder is considered kind of the gold standard of four drops, uh, but Mechanical Yeti synergy with uh, Flame Waker specifically is a big part of why it is so popular in these Tempo Mage decks. But this is a this is a tough one for Toyta. Forsen with the power overwhelming plus Void Terror to not only kill the Mana Worm, but also generate a huge threat, which Toyta currently has no answer to. Yeah, not not directly at least. Uh, it'll take a couple of turns of pinging or at least a trade onto the board. And even then he's restricted by mana usage and his opponent could be able to deal with it. So it looks like he's going to be falling behind on board for a few turns here. Because, the you know, there's one thing for a big Void here to come out, but it does end up costing a lot of cards. However, your opponent can be still playing things on the board and making your life complicated. Like Defender of Argus to protect this Void Terror if your opponent knows you can't deal with it. No, that's a problem. You're, that Void Terror is going to be ending the game in a couple of turns. I mean, if Toyta had 
hmm. a fireball or polymorph, which are really mage's best ways to deal with something like this, uh, he clearly would play it this turn. So if he doesn't, Forsen knows, okay, well, he, he can't kill it, and I can potentially just use my resources to play Defender of Argus and just go face, which I wouldn't be surprised to see him do here. If he defenders up the, uh, the two spiders, he can just hit his opponent for 12. Mm -hmm. Oh, he also just has this Voidwalker, too, <clears throat> but Voidwalker... I mean, Voidwalker, now that he just picked this up, yeah, this is actually a stronger play, uh, I think. Picking up the Voidwalker allows him to develop even more damage to the board. It's going to prevent his opponent from attacking into the Void Terror uh, just as well, and he sets him up for potentially an even better defender next turn. Yikes, still can't deal with it. Uh, has to freeze it, and that does cost uh, enough mana to make it awkward. You can't drop the Lothab, so drop the Mana Worm. Of course, there is a there is a Hail Mary play. You can go for the one in 567 or so and get the big game hunter <laughs> off the unstable portal. Why not? I, I've seen it. I actually was watching Strife Crow stream one time. He was playing as Handlock, and he's like, well, I don't want to play my, my, my big game hunter yet. I want to wait to echo it. And then he unstable portals and just gets a second big game hunter. <laughs> no way. Come on. <laughs> it was pretty good. It was on stream? It was, I was, yeah, I was watching. So, yeah, I really see a possible... I, don't know, I think I would have definitely seen it on like a highlight reel on some public well, you know, community. <laughs> well, this, is, this is a while back, so. Okay. But uh, this is going to go, still go pretty poorly for Toyota, I think. That uh, either the, the Direwolf or the Defender are both quite powerful here. Direwolf allows him to kill the Yeti and the Mana Worm. That's right. And still be able to pump Yeti, out the one. Another, and, and, and Toyota is, is left having not only still currently no way to deal with that uh, that Void Terror, but also now has an additional board to, to worry about. He did pick up Mirror Image, which unfortunately, because of the Direwolf Alpha, actually doesn't really protect him much at all. I, I think he may have to just dig with, with Gnomish Inventor here. Okay. I mean, if he Gnomish Inventors, he can perhaps pick up a way a frostbolt or a fireball something that he can potentially use to kill that void yeah. terror yeah while he still having mana to mirror in other words, right yeah okay yeah i don't really necessarily like lotheb um unless you feel like these mirror images can stall for enough time um because you know taking another nine damage won't be game ending by itself but it feels like at that point you're under pressure to to just die to whatever Doom Guard draw he has. We, we're, we're, we've, we've bought ourselves a rebuy, getting our kit intellect, so they can hope for pretty much exactly Frostbolt. Flame Strike is good, but it is slow. We're gonna he's gonna take at least eleven this turn, mm -hmm. and possibly more if that Doom Guard does come down. Flame yeah. Strike is not a mm -hmm. card that sees all that much play in Tempo Mage, so it, I have to wonder if if Forsen is going to potentially try and play around it, or uh, if he might just play into it by you know, just deploying more uh, more minions to the board. I wonder. Yeah, I'm curious to see if uh, Forsen just wants to go for pressure play to dropping Doom Guard and then just hitting for 14 or 16 damage rather to the face. I mean, the thing is, playing Doom Guard can only go so wrong. Even if your opponent flame strikes you next turn. Uh, you're getting in, like you said. It's actually, it's actually more than that, right? It's the eleven. It's seventeen if you put it to the. You oh, put it next you're right, to the, you're right. the uh, the wolf. So you end up putting your opponent to three with a doom guard and this board that even if he flame strikes, your doom guard lives and can't be killed by what you have to play. Yeah, I, I, I'm favoring the doom guard play. Uh, another alternative is just to go for a very safe approach of uh, building the board slowly, Defender of Argus, if you want to, but Doomguard seems to be the most reasonable. Uh oh, timer oh, line. Oh, that's cute. Oh, so he wants to... Okay, yeah, yeah I like it. Puts him to two. And he, he, that's actually pretty nice there. That's a, a little subtle thing that, that, that is difficult for a lot of players to see. Not only did he get an additional damage in by removing the wolf and uh, getting the imp next to it, he also gave himself a better chance to preserve his stronger cards with his Doom Guard. Actually, no, it's, it's exactly the same because he, he had the Time Rewinder versus the imp. But... <laughs> Yeah, I think um, what, what it allows him to do is, I think Bane of Doom off the top allows him to kill now. So if he, Actually, if he happens to be playing it, he can do direct damage to end the game. 
Yeah, I, actually, thinking through this again, I'm actually not sure I do like this play, because he potentially has Doomguard into Time Rewinder Doomguard next turn if somehow he needed to get through something. It, do, it does oh, one damage, yeah, yeah, I I how much that so. damage matters. It's true, but that's assuming your opponent has the exact, like, if he, if he has Frost Nova, for example, I think that'd be the right play in this scenario. But in, in this case, I think Forsen just plays to what he knows is in his deck. And sure. I've seen him go for, like, Bane of Dune in the zoo before, so I wouldn't be surprised if he was running it and was playing into that. Yeah, specifically. yeah I, can, I can definitely see that. But, uh, yeah, so Forsen picks up a quick uh, quick Game 1 win with his Warlock deck, uh, defeating the Tempo Mage of Toyota. What do you think we might see next out of these players? All right, well, uh, I think now that Forsen's got the Warlock out of the way, um, you know, and he knows that it's Tempo Mage, I think he probably want to play his own Mage. Uh, Hunter can be suspect to that Mage specifically, and I think Toyota has no true incentive to switch if he feels like that. Um, and if he's playing Freeze Mage, which I know Forsen really likes playing, then I think he'd feel in a pretty comfortable spot, because Freeze Mage should hypothetically be okay against all this, as long as it's not a mid-range Hunter um, from Toyota. Yeah, Forsen has favored Freeze Mage at least in the past couple weeks of the Archon Team League. Uh, I know he also plays it on his stream quite a bit. Uh, so I, I would be I would be kind of surprised to see him playing it different from a Mage, but it looks like he is going with his Hunter. And uh, from seeing both Glaive Zuka and High Main in his hand, uh, my guess is that he's playing a hybrid style of Hunter deck. Okay, okay. I don't mind the hybrid hunter. It's still pretty strong. Um, it allows you to be defensive enough against the space hunters while still being able to rush. And then you're slightly faster than mid range, so that way you can still get the advantage. It, it feels like a pretty smart pick if you know what type of hunter the, your opponent likes to play. But again, I'm not sure how much Force and prepared for his opponent versus just create a solid lineup of decks that he felt comfortable with. Uh, my, I, I believe that uh, the the players are are stuck with these lineups for the remainder of the tournament. So targeting their first round opponent, uh, while it can give them uh, a little bit of an edge to advance for uh, you know one more one more uh, round, uh, I think that it's more important that they end up having a, a stronger lineup overall. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree there. All right, uh, opening hands for both players seem to at least have early game plays um, and Toyota's in a very interesting position depends on how his traps are laid out in his deck he has a couple options here yeah I mean I, I think that right now I mean Toyota doesn't have a great way to use his mana he has just a bunch of two cost uh, two cost spells and minions and can't really d deploy all that much more than just one thing I mean he could go ahead and attack his uh, mad Scientist and the opposing Mad Scientist trigger both their traps and play a minion to get trapped of his own. That's not super exciting, but I think that's probably his best option here. Looks like that's what he's going for. And uh, it, it will be interesting. Yeah, we have a freezing trap for Toyta, and I'm going to guess probably the same for Forsen. Yeah, and, it, and that's there's two layers of it. You have to wonder, well, what minion do I don't mind getting bounced back, or what minion can even have an impact, um, <clears throat> assuming he has a freezing trap. And uh, in this case, he can get past that Misha, but um, he has to also somewhat forego his turn, too, because the kill command costs everything here. Right. Uh, Misha here, I think, is actually the best mm. result for Forsen from that uh, from that animal companion because it does force Toyota to use his resources really inefficiently to deal with it. Say he had gotten Huffer, he would have potentially gotten four damage in, but then Huffer can die easily to uh, uh, to the quick shot, and Toyota will be able to advance his board himself. Okay. All right. All right. This is going a, for. Uh, he's going to try a, a and push. hope that it's maybe not a freezing trap. In this 50 50, this is a big, this is a big uh, juggle here, and it goes Ooh. wrong. Yikes! So that that's what card invested into the Misha, and not to mention that Forsen does have follow up threats. You know, the Misha is the least of his worries when a shredder that's really sticky comes down the board, and a, and a freezing trap's already been used. But he does have a mad scientist to activate yet another freezing trap if he has in his deck. Yeah, though it's not. I mean, there's not a great 
opportunity for him to actually get value from the scientist and get a trap. His only way to actually kill the scientist is to attack it into the shredder, and then the damaged shredder just gets to return, and that's not really what you want to see. I mean, he could... Uh, Toyota could use quick shot here and hope to see a two-cost minion. Well, he's just, just going to attack into it. Looks like he's... Hmm. I'm a little surprised yeah. he does make this play. I would think that he'd probably just want a quick shot first. And then potentially set up... Uh, you know, set up a freezing trap when the opponent doesn't have anything in play. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, yes, he's he has his opponent's shredder somewhat locked under under his own freezing trap, but... Here, I mean, I guess he can attack that spider into the into the shredder. It's not really a, a, a great use of his trap, though. I wonder if Toyota's thinking about whether or not he wants to use quick shot for the race because he has damage in his hand and ways to just basically put out more damage. It's not going to be controlling the board anytime soon. So if that's the case and he wants to use quick shot to his face and not defensively because he if you use quick shot then you're going to be fighting at a card deficit for the remainder of the game while using your burn so i have yeah. to imagine that toy is looking for a way to get aggressive here i'm a little surprised by force and sequencing that turn he played two minions and then attacked his opponent's face i mean it seems like if, if his opponent did have an explosive trap uh it could have gone really poorly for him and there's no upside to playing the minions first yeah that's true Unless it's misdirection. If it is exact, yes. If it is if exactly, exactly misdirection, misdirection. Which, is, which is the least con I mean, maybe he was checking for <laughs> snipe by playing the... Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, that's why he played the, the spiders, the spiders first. first. <laughs> are, we seeing, are we seeing quick shot into unleash? Seems like it. Yeah, you can right. fill out the curve with the web spinner as well. Yeah. Huh? I mean, it's given that he's playing as the mid-range uh, mid deck, it's less likely that there's going to be a really full board barring anything but Dr. Boom, so you're unlikely to get a much better uh, Unleashed than that. Problem is that you use a quick shot and leave yourself with just a kill command in hand with not much pressure in play and your opponent at 28. Right. And you've already used both freezing traps, I believe, so you can't even hope to top deck a way for you to answer this high main and freeze it in plays. Yeah. I mean, this is this is part of why I was I was saying earlier that I was a little bit surprised by his choice to play the uh, the quick sh or rather the the that mad scientist attacking into the opposing shredder. He he ended up you know letting his opponent use uh, minions that were already on the board to break his freezing trap without actually getting value from it. He basically sacrificed his uh, his mad scientist to just bounce his opponent's shredder and not actually kill anything. Not if he had used the quick shot and possibly gotten a, a minion his his uh his guy could trade into that could have gone a lot better for him but here it looks like we're gonna see kill command take out well the the front half of my name and yep. i imagine yeah trade of the web spinner we get the grizzly which isn't bad no it's it's about average i think stat wise that you you'd want to come out here but Again, it's interesting that he's going for so many trades and his opponent has so many more cards and he's barely getting damage in every turn. And, you know, the biggest threat is yet to come. Dr. Boom is on the board now. And you just showed that you <laughs> tossed away almost everything. Your Hunter's Marks, your Kill Commands, your Quick Shots. How are you supposed to deal with this outside of a miraculous Pilot Shredder drop, which doesn't even come to mind? I don't even know what can really come out here other than maybe Explosive Sheep to help stabilize the board. Yeah, I mean, Toyota has used a ton of his resources trading here, and he he's just he's really low on them now. He he's gotten to the point where I mean, we were saying that it looked like uh, it looked they were both sort of playing mid ranges, maybe hybrid style of decks. So maybe he was hoping that he would be able to play toward his late game. But with how many cards were in Forsen's hand, it, it really seems dangerous to, uh, to to not play a little bit more aggressively than he has. Yeah, right. another well, unleashed has come out. Is he going to trade one more time, or is he finally going to go aggressive? And if he chooses to be aggressive, he's already used most of his burns, so he is going to be on very limited draws in order to have a chance to win this game. I mean, he knows that Forsen has at least one Shredder and the, the Haunted Creeper in hand. And I just have to wonder what, what his plan is here. And I'm a little surprised that we didn't see that ha the, uh, the dog attack first before attacking into the, the bomb. He ended up losing yeah. it without an attack from it. No, it, it is a missed damage in this scenario. 
and I mean, this is not going to stop Forsen from being able to push massive damage right back at his opponent either. And that's the second Unleashed Hounds that's used. So Forsen looks like he's in a prime position to just close out this game. Um, I can't imagine any card coming out from Toyota's deck here that'll save him. It's certainly not low Feb. <laughs> I mean, Toyota is pretty much out of... He's used both Unleashes, so he's totally out of real comeback mechanisms. Hunter doesn't have ways to clear a board like this. It's, it's good at dealing with a bunch of small minions, thanks to Unleash, but uh, Dr. Boom is not small, and neither is Pilot and Shredder. Yeah, um, Doomsayer, I guess, is his last chance. That's, yeah, that's what we're, we're going to see from Toyota here, is uh, an attempt. Nope. No, it is not there. So, basic run of the mill, and that's guaranteed lethal because of what's on board here. Yeah, there's nothing. There's Toyota could, could trade into both two ones, but the uh, the Whoa. death rattle from Lepronome or the hero power would still finish him off. Oh, that's two zero. Yeah, Potentially two goes. quick series here, man. Forcing goes up two games to zero with just his mage deck left, while Toyota has yet to pick up the game. So if we do think that Forsen is playing Freeze Mage, uh, I, I think he's in a really good spot here. Uh, you know, not only is uh, he already up two games to zero, only needs to win one more game, but given what we've seen of Toyota's lineup, it does seem like Freeze Mage is likely to be quite effective against it. Yeah, I certainly think so. I think the, the mid-range hunter would be more problematic than other classes. Um, and, and there are some Warlock decks that can put up a pretty good fight. Uh, we forget that occasionally some of the handlocks or some of those defensive handlock decks have Ragnaros and puts a really big clock on the Freeze Mage, but uh, generally speaking, I'd put Forsen as a heavy favorite to close out this series and go to uh, what would be the semifinal match of today before we go into uh, the last match. And it is, in fact, Freeze Mage from Forsen, uh, unsurprisingly, while Toyota goes with his Mage deck. And Mage is not really the deck that that I that I or a uh, tempo mage that I really want to play against uh, against freeze mage here. Um, you have so many cards that are just really weak. I mean, look at his hand now: mirror image, flame cannon, frostbolt. You know, in order for a deck to be able to actually beat freeze mage, you really need to put on consistent damage early in the game, because otherwise you just run the risk of oh. losing to their ice block. He has nothing to do. He literally. Yeah. It's ping your face on turn two against Freeze Mage. That is just, that is a disaster. Well, it's basically a Freeze Mage mirror. We just ping each other yeah. for the first few turns. Except one of them actually has the Freeze cards in it. Gosh. It's just unfortunate that he picked up two of his most expensive cards this early on. And this happens once in a while with Hello? the Tempo Mage, right? Where you oh, see yeah. inconsistent draws, to say the least. It's one of the biggest criticisms against the deck that... Its consistency is really flawed because even if you draw well, sometimes you have Flame Waker not hitting the right things and you're leaving, you know, Unstable Portal to give you nothing. Look at this! It is a Freeze oh, Mage Mirror. I mean, oh my Toyo, goodness. You see, you see he, is, he is just, he is crushed. He is exasperated with, with uh, his misfortune here. I mean, he really, what you, he really wants to pick up is obviously, you know, cards like Mana Worm, cards like, uh, you know, Mad Scientist, things that can actually pressure his opponent early on. Flame Waker, even, even just Unstable Portal. But all of his spells in this matchup are pretty bad. Whoops. You know, Fireball, Frostbolt, they're reasonable to potentially finish the opponent off if the game goes to that point. But you really need the pressure to be able to go with them in order to get to that point. So, Mirror Image, great against decks with weapons, not so hot against decks that aren't even attacking your minions. Yeah, it's just going to be using removal spell after removal spells in the following turns. He even opts to just play Flame Waker on board just to draw a little bit of pressure and save his spells. I have to imagine he wants to use Mirror Image as a way to gather Fireball damage for Antonitis. There is one possibility um, that he can try to burn his opponent out of the game, use Dr. Boom's Boom Bots and the threat of it to be able to kill it. Hey, Ragnaros is a good that card That is too. a big card. That is the one really expensive card in his deck that he's pretty happy to see because it is not a card that Freeze Mage is particularly well set up to deal with. And now we're just seeing Fireball to the face. I mean, and for, not only does Force it have Ice Block active, he has Heal Bot in his hand. And he can even, yeah, he's going to play the Heal Bot here, getting himself further and further out of range. But, I mean, we can see Dr. Boom come down here, and that's actually, while Toyota had a pretty bad start, you know, he does have the Ragnaros and uh, 
Archmage that can a- attempt to buy him time, uh, or rather, rather actually get buy him, make him up some of that time that he lost in the uh, in the early game. Those are just really powerful cards that are not easy for uh, Freeze Mage to deal with. Unfortunately, Forsen does have a lot of removal effects in his hand. Mm. Yeah, he's he's able to you know potentially. Uh, flame strike this down, and then even have Fireball Frostbolt to be able to kill. Uh, oh, he does not go for the flame strike. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks, looks like he's setting up for there. Blizzard next turn. Yeah, and and that will potentially allow him to use Blizzard plus Ice Lance or something like that to deal with an additional minion that Toyta plays this turn. Yep. So, for instance, if Toyta played the Ragnaros here, uh, that would allow. Oh, force him to possibly attack into it with the uh, uh, the mad scientist if it survives, and then Blizzard Ice Lance to remove it. Yes, and you also can't underestimate the power that it has communicating to Toy that he doesn't have Flame Strike, even if um, you know, even if his opponent feels like he, he's hiding it. It's one of those things where you use Frost Nova, and you're like, well, I'm not sure if he has Flame Strike because that was a situation maybe he could use it. I can understand why Forsen doesn't want to, though. Flame Strike is a really valuable card against Board Flood. Um, you know, that way you can continue to reset the board and be able to d- decisively gain control of it. So we see Antonidas Mirror Image come up, which gives Toyota a little bit more burn. Uh, he really wants that Antonidas to survive this turn. And then we, uh, ooh, the Doomsayer. And this is interesting because normally... Something like Blizzard Doomsayer is a great way to seal your opponent from being able to damage you, but it is a little bit worse against Antonitis, because Antonitis uh, doesn't threaten you by attacking, it threatens you just by existing on the board. So, Forsen could be an awkward spot here. If he Blizzards, and the Boombots kill his Mad Scientist, he actually uh, struggles to remove Antonitis from the board this turn. Uh, I think he has to part ways with the ping and the ice lands in order to do that. What to do? Um, but generally speaking, you're right. Oh, he does still have the coin. I I missed the fact he still the coin in hand. Yeah. Right. But. (laughs) Well, it works out okay. I guess. It works out perfectly. His uh, his mad scientist eats one damage but does not die, and then ice lands plus the mad scientist will. (laughs) It literally is perfectly. You're right. Yeah, it's actually perfect. And he, he actually the coin and kill Doctor Boom too if he wants to, but he chooses not to, which I think is I think is, is correct. The the Doctor Boom is not threatening to kill him, and uh, coin is potentially still valuable later t- turns. So Man right. and Ragnaros. Yep, Ragnaros is big pressure, but I mean this is one of the weakest pressure Ragnaros I've seen in a while against Freeze Mage. Well, the, the, prob- the problem is, yeah, that, that Toyota just had no pressure earlier, so Forsen has all of his resources left to deal with it. Let's see, so is there... Oh, see. Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. Yeah, I was just kind of see if he just removes it, or if Forsen has room to be greedy at all, but I think against a deck where that's exhausted most of its expensive cards, like Antonidas, Dr. Boom, and Ragnaros, I think you're okay parting ways with your removal. Especially because you have Antonidas in hand to refill on some of those removal spells. Yeah. yeah the, uh, the amount of pressure that Toyota has demonstrated he's, he's able to put out uh, is pretty low. And you know, Forsen is still at 17 with both Ice Block and Ice Barrier. He does, mm-hmm. does know that Toyota picked up an extra Fireball. Um, but, you know, how scary can this Mana Worm really be right now? When you have Ice Barrier, um, not as much as you would expect in one turn, but Twitter has ways to pop Ice Block yeah, this without is actually, using the Ice Barrier. Yeah, this is actually pretty interesting, and he can play the Apprentice and just fire away and, and break the, uh, potentially break the Ice Barrier. Oh, he goes with the Arcane Intellect. He's, it looks like he's trying to play around uh, a possible Alexstrasza. If he did just fire off all of his burn spells, he would he would run the risk of having nothing left if his opponent had Alexstrasza. Right. He can still oh. mix and match here. One fireball, one frostbolt, and the ping, and then still do the next turn, even if his sem- uh, sorceress dies. Uh, yes, he could. I'm actually a little given given just how uh, how. Badly, this game has. Oh, and there's the Alex Drive. 
I was going to say that given given sort of how how badly this game has largely gone for Toyota to this point, I was a little surprised that he didn't just kind of go for it and hope that Forsen you know was in a position where he he couldn't Alex Straza next turn. But here, Forsen just picks up the Alex Straza, so this is certainly going to be a very tough game for Toyota to win. I, I dare say impossible because I think that's all of his burn damage at that point, and now he can't even load up preemptively on the board. Although I think if he plays Mad Scientist, he might get um. He might get a mere entity, so for no, no, he can still play loot hoarder before. He can loot hoarder coin out Alex Straza. Well, that's annoying. Huh. Yeah, so we we're gonna see Alex Straza come down next turn. And uh put Forsen right back out of range. And Toyota's hand again is still just I mean, it, even this this far into the game, Toyota's hand is is still unimpressive. Yeah, he's drawing mirror images and flame strikes, and oh well, there's a second oh. flame cannon. He can kill oh. Alex Straza. He finally found a use for those. Yeah, there it is. It allows him to climb back on the board. Alex Straza is not threatening to do eight damage per turn. And then the, you know, again, still bigger questions on the mind though is realistically, do you have what it takes to continue to push it out? Because you have now that you use most of your burn. You're either going to have to ping down your opponent um, or you're going to have to get through those ice barriers. And either way, it's not very desirable. Both take a very long time. Not only is most of his burn gone, but just most of his high impact cards are gone. You know, because he, he already used his Antonitis, his Ragnaros, his Doctor Boom. I mean, he, his deck now is full of things like, you know, mirror images and mad scientists and flame wakers, none of which are particularly impressive in this kind of spot. Hmm, okay. Forsen ends up opting to uh, convert the fireball existing into it. And this way he knows what, uh, that the secret's activated. Oh, that Lothab would have been a nice draw earlier in the game if he was able to put pressure on, but not in this scenario necessarily. He needs to still deal with that Antonitis. There's only one way. Only one way is to flame strike it and then frostbolt, and then you're officially out of burn. I think maybe one more fireball. Yeah, this is this is just a disaster for Toyota. I mean, he is not only in, out of resources, but you know, again, out of anything powerful in his deck. So I mean, I don't even know we can hope to draw from this position. Normally, you're in this sort of position, like oh, I, at least I could draw Ragnaros. At least I could draw uh, Doctor Boom. At least I could draw Antonitis. But he's already played all of them. His opponent is hiding behind an ice barrier at 14 life with several cards in hand and a board. This is just not a, a situation that I really see Toyota coming back from. Well, uh, there is one thing to consider is that Forsen also has used a lot of his late game too. And he probably has maybe the Pyroblast and some other burn, but he's going to have to find a way to deal consistent damage to his opponent too um that's, outside that's of finding true, out 28 points of burn that is that is actually true i mean forsen has used his antonitis he's used his alexstrasza and toyota is still at 28 so it, it is theoretically possible that uh that forsen may actually also just be totally out of gas yeah we'll cross that bridge when we get there though in the meantime uh forsen he recognizes that he has 8 extra health from that Ice Barrier. He picks up more burn so he can play removal games. And his opponent is all in. This is what needs to be pushing through. Ooh, Unstable portal! What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> it's, it's more like a Wonder Ball from the 90s, if you can recall that, Kibler. You, you never know what's going to come out. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm, I'm old enough that I wasn't really a kid in the 90s. I was a kid in the 80s. So. <laughs> oh, man. God, past my time. <laughs> well, uh, let's let's see what uh, Unstable Portal can whip out here. I don't even know what's necessarily the best in this scenario. I guess you would you can just go ahead and say like any big threat that Freeze Mage can't deal with that's high health. But even then, Force has double Portal fireball into Ragnaros. Uh, Ragnaros can get fireball twice, but that'd be pretty epic just to shoot the face here. <gasps> Yasera! Oh my God! Yasera! That's really hard to deal with. That is, oh, man. Not only is it really hard to deal with, but it will give him more resources. We were talking about the fact that Toyota is out of his valuable resources in this game and needs more cards that can actually 
you know, allow him to to continue to pressure Forsen, and that that is a card that not only is going to be difficult for Forsen to remove now, but will continue <laughs> to generate resources for him that will get him back into this game. That was incredible. Yeah, now uh, Forsen needs his opponent to not draw anything useful to remove that, uh, some, like, uh, Laughing Sister's not that great, and he needs to draw his Doomsayer. Well, oh, yeah, my goodness. <laughs> All right. Well, th this game officially became what Forsen and his crew calls a clown fiesta. This has just become like a comedy. <laughs> now, Toyta, if he draws his sec his last remaining fireball, I believe, then he can also use uh, get rid of this Doomsayer and keep his Jusera on the board. But I mean, this is like back to back to back top decking and like crazy scenarios happening. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned that, that the Laughing Sister isn't a, a good pickup for Toyta, but I actually think it might be among the best. Laughing Sister, the fact that it's untargetable by spells, what does Forsen have left that can actually remove it? Oh, that's a yeah, good point. Uh, Laughing Sister typically is, is you know, a card that you're not super thrilled to see Ysera give you because at that point in most games, there's lots of big minions in play. But Freeze Mage isn't really a deck that has those big minions that can contest the Laughing Sister effectively. That's a really good point. I wasn't really thinking along those lines with the interaction with the deck matchups. Um, you know, we're just normally accustomed to seeing that you'd rather have a bigger threat like the Emerald Drake, or you can remove the, you know, you can do damage with Burn, or you can remove that Doomsayer somehow. So, a really good point. Um, in this case, Toyta might need to rely on that Laughing Sister in order to end the game here, assuming it can get to that point. Forzen has some more ways to draw. He even has a minion or two to maybe get uh, deep burn to his deck, but... I'm hard pressed to imagine that it truly could end the game because I think Forsen still has another ice barrier in his deck. Sarah Awakens oh. is normally the best card, but I actually think in this case Toyota would have been happier to get a second Laughing Sister. Ha ha ha! Well, there is. Uh, I mean, you never know if your opponent has another Flame Strike or you know some way to impact the board, explosive sheeps and whatnot. But um, you know, in this case, I think you're absolutely right. And we see the, uh, okay, a Yeti. Azure Drake. Oh my goodness. I, Forsen didn't draw with Arcane Intellect, so I think he might be decking out yep. soon. This, this is actually a really bizarre game. This is a, a truly bizarre game. Uh, you know, we were, we were talking for a little bit that we felt like Toyota was kind of out of it, but Forsen ended up using so many of his resources and not getting much from them. You know, his, his uh, Alexstrasza had to be used to keep himself alive. And then as Antonitis, he only got one fireball, I believe, with Antonitis. And now, you know, he's he's drawing his card draw, and he can't afford to cast it. Well, looks like Emperor Thorson will reduce some of the cost of these cards, but is it really going to be that impactful? Because he needs to find a way to get as much mileage out of the cards as possible. Emperor Thorson needs to challenge the three five directly. Ooh, can't reversing switch the three five, so. <laughs> Yeah. Emperor, Emperor Thorson is, is most valuable here because he's a 5-5. Five five. Not because he's yes. reducing anything, but because he's able to win against Laughing Sister in a fight. <laughs> well, second mechanical Yeti is an interesting inclusion as well. Not every deck puts two Yetis in. Like you were mentioning, the Shredders were the king of the four-drop spot. And, you know, Mechanical Yeti was good as a supplementary feature so that you can get spells with Flame Waker and Antonitis. Um, but in this scenario, anything that's like a quality drop is helpful. I mean, basically they're playing Arena right now. They just, you know, they, they just need to get minions into play. They're able to damage the opponent consistently. Both of them have used most of their really fancy, high-powered cards. Yep. And uh, now it's really just about sort of grinding out a normal battle of minions versus minions. Yeah, now Toyota knows that his opponent has Ice Barrier number two out. So as much as he would like to get his opponent down to 1 HP with like Ysera Awakens play right now. He doesn't want to activate that Ice Barrier, so he might be trying to see if he can ping and reduce the health that way. Like all these different combinations of plays are going through his head of like, what's the better result? Like what's the long-term play? Because he knows that um, a one way to work around Ice Block is just solely to let Fatigue kill you. Because then you don't have to worry about popping it on his turn and letting your opponent get in another turn. Yeah. I mean, here, though, he knows that he, he wants to remove his opponent's uh, Emperor because his opponent's also hard-pressed to kill him without minion damage. Yeah. This, hmm. Forsen, I, I feel like he only has Pyroblast in his deck left. 
I think that might be true. You know, I, th- I think that it's possible that he. Oh man, the stealth. The stealth is a big deal, I think, because it keeps his Azure Drake onto the board. Oh, but yeah. Toyota's also went down to two cards. Oh, Toyota well. has two cards. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Both of them have really just used like all their resources. And wow, this is a this is a really truly bizarre yeah. game. It's debating, okay, can I play an Azure Drake? Can I play this Arcane Intellect? Yeah, I was thinking maybe he could use his Azure Drake to get in some damage, but he doesn't want to take any additional fatigue. But is that the key to winning, though? Like, the Azure Drake getting in a hit is so big. Oh, oh my <laughs> god. That is a little terrible. On Forsen's face as he's looking at his hand. That of of a fireball and three cards that kill him if they play if he plays them. <laughs> like, yeah. This is just a a oh. hilarious situation. I'm he and the last card I believe is Pyroblast for Forsen. Sorcerer's right, Apprentice so, so, so. is just a minion, which is helpful. Like and I wonder if we're gonna see him just cloak it up to get in one hit. I'm out of I mean again it could be really valuable. And ooh, there is no oh. pyroblast for Forsen's back. He's just gonna go ahead and fatigue. Forgot and about that. <laughs> oh wow! So yeah. That was, see, I mean, there was one point in that game where we counted Toyota out, but Por- Porson, you know, he didn't find his card draw until he was already really deep in his deck, was not able to use his Archmage uh, Antonidas particularly effectively, and he was the one who ultimately ran out of resources. Yeah, that was really interesting to see how that ended up panning out. Went the distance, and Toyota. Ended up being able to survive it, and now the series is three to one or two to one. Excuse me, three to one would have been over, um, which gives him a chance. You know, the mid range hunter. I expect that to be coming out next, and then the warlock, which Forsen still doesn't know exactly what it is. And if it's a zoo warlock, that has a lot of pressure. Those those matchups can be tough, but sometimes freeze mage again draws a little bit awkwardly, and then you're able to steal the series three two. So, uh, Toyota is still alive in the series for sure. And yeah, we're gonna see. It looks like uh, I think yep, Hunter against the Freeze Mage, and uh, this is a matchup where I generally am happy to be on the side of the Hunter. Um, you know, you have both a lot of cards in your deck that naturally pressure your opponent quite well early on, and then with a the hero power that can ignore the freezes that the Freeze Mage deck can actually put out and allow you to continue to pressure through them. Uh, it generally can put you in a pretty good spot. So you see, coin out. Creeper, and this this makes uh, the opening a bit more resilient to something like a Mad Scientist, which we see now, or uh, a possible Frostbolt. And I think we're probably going to see Juggler here, and then an attack into the Mad Scientist to give uh, Toyota a good chance of killing the Scientist. And yeah, it's up. a very this strong a big juggle. No, and <laughs> everything goes wrong for Toyota. He had about Whoa. a two-thirds chance to kill that juggler there, and now instead of killing the juggler, or killing the mad scientist and protecting his juggler, uh, the mad scientist takes out the juggler, and now we have a 1-3 Acolyte of Pain against two one ones, which is a pretty terrible situation for Toyota. Uh, well, the Animal Companion here also could have low impact, but Huffer... Mm, Huffer, Huffer allows him to deny a draw, but... You want to put pressure too at the same oh, time. Oh no! You, uh, I think I, here I think you you absolutely go face. You know you need to you need to get pressure on, and then and also if your opponent you know attacks one of your one ones and then you know doesn't kill your huffer, you can then houndmaster huffer and you know just get a ton of damage in with a, a, a very large minion. I just don't like the idea that your freeze mage can draw a lot of cards because that is the key to winning against a deck with a lot of pressure too. Sometimes in this case. Picking up the Ice Lance is huge because he denies that damage and Houndmaster doesn't get the benefit off of it. So I understand exactly what you're saying. Yeah, the pressure is key, but uh, it might end up being a backfiring process because this Acolyte is going to draw three cards, maybe. Or well, if you if you Houndmaster up the uh, uh, if you Houndmaster up the Huffer now, uh, yep. you you end up in a position where your opponent at least can't attack through. He needs to use mana in order to to actually ping his his Acolyte. Yeah. Uh, fair I, as the aggressive deck, using your resources to try and deny your opponent draws, while sometimes it's 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 correct, I think that you know you just do so much damage with Huffer there, um, or at least threaten to. He did face the the ice block there, or the or the ice lance there, which made things a lot worse for him, because um, otherwise you know he'd be getting in four damage to the previous turn and then six damage this turn. 
and if he had just attacked into the Acolyte of Pain, his opponent could possibly just ping off his Huffer, and then he loses his pressure. All right, well, yeah, in this case, he still can stall. Um, being able to stall is really significant, too, but one thing that is nice is that uh, he has his Alex Straza in hand, and that might be able to set up a win condition if he can pick up Burn with Ice Block, and he can keep that existing for the following uh, turn to end the game, because Hunter can't really heal. Last time I checked, I don't really think people are putting heal bots in. Um, not a common um, hunter card. Yeah. No, not at all. So yeah, all right. I, I imagine likely see the bow and just hero power here. Uh, Toyota already has a really, a really impressive board, and he can just put Forsen on needing to be able to deal with it. Unfortunately for him, Forsen does have the Blizzard that will uh, help lock down the board. But then Toyota does have a Savannah High Main to follow up next turn. Yeah, the Savannah High Main is a pretty big deal because it's very difficult for Freeze Mage to either keep it frozen or to deal with it efficiently with cards. Hmm. Snake Trap, not really what you're looking for. Not unless you're trying to bait your opponent to give you more charges with the weapon, but in this case, the Savannah High Main's more powerful. Yeah, High Main here is, you know, a, a lot more powerful. I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious if we'd see. I was gonna say, I'm curious if we'd see him, uh, Toyota possibly attack that Acolyte. It does protect his Hoffer from, from a possible just attack ping. So right now, if if, if Forsen, you know, just doesn't have any sort of AoE, he can just attack Ping and clear the, the Huffer naturally. Though, Toyota also has to be, you know, playing around the fact that maybe he has uh, other uh, other removal effects. He does just draw into Frostbolt. Frostbolt and Frostbolt here. So, this is actually really bad for, for Toyota because Forsen has the ability to take out a lot of his board. You see, ooh, you see a Thalnos here? Yeah, Forsten wants to draw. He needs. To, he knows that he can't always stop uh, the pressure from Hunter to um, to kill him because he needs to find a way to win too. Although um, I don't like taking this much damage. That's, well, that's, that's what I was gonna say. I, I, I imagine. I, I think that that what seems to be the safest play, at least, is to just frostbolt the uh, the high main here to prevent six damage next turn. He's taking so much damage if he just plays the blood main. Yeah. What's also unfortunate. What's also unfortunate is that Forsen drew his Mad Scientist, and there's three secrets in his hand. So that's gonna eliminate the possibility of him getting Ice Block without necessarily uh, being able to uh, play it from his hand. And then you usually want to get Alex Straza out if you can be aggressive. But again, he can't. So he's gonna be really defensive this game, probably for the rest of the game. He's, he's just gonna really hope that he draws Flame Strike or something to be able to stabilize here. Yeah, he is he is in a tough spot already. You know, he's facing down a, a a lot of damage. Even if he is able to have some sort of board clear, he's still facing down the uh, the death rattle minions from Savannah High Main. He did draw Doomsayer, but without a Frost Nova or Blizzard, he has no way to actually protect that Doomsayer. Is Doomsayer enough to stall? I'm not sure. If he plays Doomsayer, for example, and then um, just hope that it gains seven health. I mean, he can play just Doomsayer Ice Block here. I think yeah. it's a reasonable option. Because uh, if he doesn't, if he doesn't play Ice Block or, or Ice Barrier here, he's like entirely possibly going to die. Yeah. So Ice Block and Ice Barrier. Um, you know, that's that's like the really safe play just to make sure you can try to survive. Plus, there's nine damage on board. Plus, you know, the eight that you gain. So you feel like you're canceling out it in a certain way. Not the worst scenario to play Ice Barrier versus later in the game it might get more difficult. And and that's a, that's a terrible draw for Toyota in the sense that he wanted to play something else to threaten. He would be able to attack this turn and he'd want to get the weapon attack uh, another time. And this could be a case of why sometimes in the previous turn you can argue that Toyota might should have attacked because you know how long will he realistically be able to get an opportunity to get a second charge? He probably just want to attack with the bow and get the damage in. I mean, there's you know the argument that you want to attack with it because worst case scenario for you is you draw another bow that you can't actually use. Um, there's also the argument that you want to have possibly the, uh, the the bow available to attack if your other guys get frozen. Uh, we really weren't in a situation where 
uh, it was likely that you know, he he would a have his guys frozen and b have something to attack with the bow that really mattered. I, mean, I could see like you know getting his guys frozen and then using bow unleash qu uh, oh. quick shot to possibly kill a doomsayer. So you know I, I can see not wanting to to use it the previous turn for that reason. Mm -hmm. Sforson does pick up flame strike, which he can use to clear the board here with the frostbolt on the Savannah high main plus flame strike. That will leave his opponent with uh, a beast from the web spinner, and then a second trap, obviously, but nothing else. Which I think I, I feel like if you're in Forsen's position, you probably want to clear this board. I'm not really a, uh, a freeze mage aficionado, so it, there could be something else that he wants to set up for. But that seems like the, the likely strong play to me, and that's what he gives for. Yeah. Uh, what I really like about this play too is that it Ooh, leaves your opponent a big core hound. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, a big one. Yeah. What I, I, what I, I also like um, core hound and hero power here. Core hound represents so much damage. Yeah, your opponent has to fireball that in order to survive. You've already used both frost bowls, and you threaten to pop the ice block next turn. Although awkwardly enough, the core hound yeah, is core hound too much weapon. damage. It is. It is. It's kind of funny. You could yeah. just play Corehound and shoot, but then if you attack with your weapon, yeah, Corehound would actually leave your opponent very high in life. So it's possible that the better play is actually piloted Shredder for that reason. It's it's a very strange position, though we know that, that Forsen has the anti keel bot in his hand, and Corehound goes a long way toward uh, negating a lot of that life gain. Yeah. Not to mention that you already have a freezing trap up, and your opponent knows you have freezing trap. So you're, if he plays the antique heal bot, you're gonna have to expend something to make sure it doesn't bounce back. And Potter is also more resilient. You know, if he had so, fireball on Corehound, um, something pops out here, and it could be equally threatening. It is. It is kind of funny that 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 you know you can just have a minion that's just too big. It's like, no, sorry. Ooh, and the Alexstrasza to the opponent's face. And now if you had Corehound in play, that could just contest the Alexstrasza. Haha, <laughs> okay, there you go. That's the scenario where having the Corehound was better. Assuming you just don't want to pop it, too. I mean, this turn, you can pop the Ice Block. And Alexstrasza's not going anywhere um, because the Freezing Trap. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you just pop the, the Ice Block, leaving your opponent at one. Yes. You use the Unleash the Hounds, right? Because that doesn't really get much value. Okay, the weapon. Um, I mean, it's not like your opponent's. I mean, your opponent could attack with his Alexstrasza and, and get your uh, your Unleash out of here. But I think you want to play Core Hound. I think you want the big big hit that threatens. Even if your opponent does play an Ice Barrier or Heal or something, the Core Hound does so much damage that your opponent basically has to. You know, you're going to block break an Ice Block next turn if you play a Core Hound. Right, looks like you might want Mad Scientist though. Maybe he's saving Corehound because he wants to be guaranteed a beast if he draws Kill Command. Yep, that's also a possibility too. But at the same time, Corehound costs seven mana, so Corehound plus Kill Command is the same damage as Kill Command plus Hero Power. Because you can't use your Hero Power in the same turn you cast Corehound and, yep. and Kill Command. It's true. What it's do? true. Assuming there's minions on the board. Forsen's in an awkward spot, too, where he's not sure if his opponent has Explosive Trap, and if he has Explosive Trap, he kills himself by attacking into his opponent's uh, Hero Portrait. So, if he does that, he has to play Ice Block and the Heal Bot. What which do? still gets popped anyways the following turn. Yeah. And that's all his heal. Yeah, interestingly, Ice Block uh, uh, and, and uh, the Heal Bot also actually makes him potentially more vulnerable to the Unleash. Um, in a future turn, uh, we're, so we're gonna see. Ooh, all right, this is this is a bold move. He's trying to fish for other burn. Yeah, he definitely wants to try and put himself in a position where playing the ice block, he can then finish the game the next turn, which I definitely think makes sense. He doesn't want to. Uh, he wants to be able to. He knows that he's gonna die in like two turns to a hero power or or something like that. Um, so he doesn't want want to put himself in a position where he's just sort of trying to stay alive a little bit. He only has so much ability to to, uh, to buy time, and he's better off trying to fish for ways to actually end the game with, say, Fireball, Fireball, Frostbolt, than he is for trying to extend the game much longer. 
He already used two frost bolts though, so I think his only out is to attack with one of these minions to the face, and then two fireballs. Um, oh, and true. Good, yeah. If, if Toyta just freezes the minions on board here, like pushes both of these small minions out, then yeah. That's going to be an easy way for Toyota to end the game because he can just rely on hero power. It doesn't matter that his opponent has uh, the antique heal bot because he's got kill command and quick shot. Yeah, he has a lot of damage in his hand right now. So we're going to see... <laughs> Here comes Corehound. Oh, gosh. So now Forsen, with both his ice blocks gone and a huge amount of damage in the opposing side of the table thanks to that Corehound, uh, is just not in a position where he can he can actually win this game, right? He can. I mean, he's dead to he's dead to the hero power, even if he heal bots because of the the quick shot plus kill command. So yeah, I don't really see an out for him. I mean, Forsen doesn't know that, but he does know that his opponent has three cards in hand, which makes it very unlikely that he's going right. to you know survive even gaining life here. Well, he's going to try to play heal bot. I have to imagine he's going to fireball core out and then frost oh. ice lance the. The pilot shredder. I mean, how does he win then, though? If he if he uses his his fireball on the corehound, what are even his outs at that point? Well, um, I guess he, he, can, does well, he has Antonidas, but he, and he needs to he needs to buy a lot of time. Well, I mean, assuming the peelbot can bounce back as a freezing trap, then That's he can true. play that That's again, true. and then Alex draws his. Mm -hmm. But now I think we're gonna see unleash quick shot kill command. And I believe that's gonna be enough. Oh, certainly. I think it's uh, 2, 7, 10. You can weave into hero power as well, 12. Yeah, yeah it's going to be enough damage to, to close this game out. And Toyota taking his time counting a little bit, at least. Yeah. But uh, it is. But th this is like a tough matchup in general, enough. I think. This is not a matchup yeah. that I think you were feeling like, wow, I'm definitely favored in. I think this one was you know, more complicated than it looked. And now the series is tied 2-2. Yep, that's kind of how it is. Uh, to a good lead, but but Toyota has come back to tie things up. And now we have Toyota's Warlock deck, which we have not seen yet. And that's actually a pretty big deal, because Forceman won't necessarily know exactly what he's up against, uh, while Toyota clearly has pretty much full information about Forceman's Freeze Mage deck after, uh, after all these games. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Toyota does have the information advantage here, going to game number five, and... That might throw Forsen off a little bit, but I think in the end it won't change his mulligans too much. He's going to want to keep uh, the card draws early on. He's going to want to fish for the mad scientists. Things like that will be what he's looking for early. And Toyda seems that he has more of that handlock or defensive warlock approach. Ends up keeping the owl and the drake. Don't blame him at all. Those are two great cards against this deck. And, and you know, very clearly Toyota on handlock. Uh, and this is a matchup that I've, I've actually heard people uh, have have disagreements about uh, how it generally plays out. What do you what do you think this uh, this is going to look like? Oh, I generally favor the handlock if they have anything to play early on. Um, it's just too much threat and too much health to deal with. Like the fact that Twilight Drake can drop for eight health or more, or in this case, the Mountain Giants as well. Very problematic for the Freeze Mage to deal with. Um, you know, even if they have draw, they're spending their early turns drawing, not necessarily doing um, you know removal. And if they have to remove, then they're not drawing. You know, etc. I mean, Forsen not, does have a pretty strong draw here, though. He has the uh, the, the Mad Scientist into Accolade of Pain, which is pretty much the curve that you want against more or less anyone. Though they do not line up very well against Mountain Giant. Yeah, not to mention that Forsen's also drawn two of his secrets, and he'd rather draw other stuff. Uh, one thing that can come into play, though, is, like you mentioned, um, the fact that his draw is pretty significant early on does potentially give opportunity for Forsen to maybe even burn his opponent down if he's being careless with his health. Because there is a lot of pecking going away, you know, like 21 health, and mm -hmm. his opponent most likely won't kill both those minions because he doesn't necessarily want a hellfire. So, like, you know, those type of things allow him to really get some extra reach in. Yeah, it does seem it does seem like the the fact that the warlock deck uses its life total as a resource makes it so that unlike in a lot of matchups where you need to get the Alexstrasza into burn, sometimes you can actually just win by drawing enough of your burn spells. 
Okay. I think, uh, yeah, eliminating the chances of drawing another secret is okay since he's been stalled here. Yeah, and then are we going to see the Frostbolt take that out and then the, uh, the Acolyte get another draw here, maybe? Or no, we're just going to see Blood Mage Thalnix come down. Sure. Just draw more cards. He already has a way to stall out that giant attack, so he'll work with 19 effective health next turn. Mm -hmm. And this this puts uh, puts Toyota in a spot where you know he can just send his minions to the face, but then he's potentially leaving that Blood Mage Thanos up, which could make Blizzard much more dangerous for his minions. Right. At the same time, though, Emperor Thorson with these many cards in hand that is a that is a big emperor. Yeah, you get two cheap owls. You get cheaper threads. You get, I mean, Draxus could be considered healing if you get burned really low as well. And then you have Antique Heal Bot that's also cheaper too. Like these are really high impact cards in this matchup. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, the the fact that uh, the owls in this matchup can be used not only to stop, say, a a doomsayer on the imposing side, but also just silence your own frozen minions. You know, that's something that that is a huge deal when uh, your opponent is using all these freeze effects to try to buy time. Yeah, certainly. And that's where things like Forsen's position is really awkward because now he realizes his opponent uh, has a lot of cheaper cards and it's hard to play around everything when you can discount eight mana or so from the Emperor Thorson. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a, a game that looks like Toyota's game to lose from this position. You know, Forsen has already had to use a fireball uh, just to deal with the Emperor, so that whole burn you out for using your life total as a resource plan we were talking about earlier is a lot harder to pull off. Yeah, he still has Antonitis with spells that can give him fireballs, but you're right, and it's gotten to the point where this Mountain Giant's lived way too long. It's lived for four... This is its fourth turn alive now, um, and that's... Mm. That's just problematic for you to deal with if it's going to live one more turn and Forsen just has to keep stalling and hoping he draws Doomsday, which inevitably gets silenced anyways. I mean, this is this is a really a really bad spot for Forsen. He really needs, I think, to find his own Emperor. If he was able to find Emperor and get get a discount on this hand of spells, maybe he can get a good turn where he's able to play, uh, you know, enough things that he can actually keep up with this board. But right now, he's just so far behind. Oh man, and no secret gets pulled out either. Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Yes. So now Forsen is facing down a board that will break his ice block uh, and doesn't really have a great turn here. I mean, he can play, he can maybe play Blizzard to try and, you know, try and stall for a turn, but that's not going to be especially effective uh, against either the you know potential silences from Toyota or uh, really... Just about anything, <laughs> you know, even just buying one more turn, those those minions are still lethal the following turn. Yeah, I wonder if Forsen wants to use his silence or just get things like his ice barrier some value while he knows he can. Those things are like those are pretty hard questions to ask. He can remove a little bit of power on the board and draw another card with the acolyte. Um That might be reasonable, in fact. If he just like kills a sludge belcher and plays ice barrier. Yeah, I think that's I think that's reasonable. It will at least on board mean that his ice block is not getting killed, uh, not getting broken next turn. Uh, he does get to uh, oh, he's gonna is he gonna frost Nova here? Okay. Yeah. That this this also means that you know his opponent can't with a single silence break his ice block again. So it's it is buying him a little bit of time. Mm hmm. I mean, he can pop the ice block too. It is using both of your owls, which feels very scary, considering that if he freezes again and plays the Doomsayer, you don't have an answer for it. Yeah, I, don't really, but, I don't really like using both your owls here, I don't think. But what's good is that if you use both owls, you have Jaraxxus from the hand to That's true. pop the block again if he has number two. Though, I mean, I, and you have seen a fireball already, so your opponent's ability to burst you is, is, is lower than it might otherwise be. Yeah, on eight mana nonetheless. He has to have Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, Fireball number two. So I, uh, hmm. That's assuming Drax is, isn't the game ending blow. I, it depends. Yeah, I, I, think I, I think I just like 
a uh, a bit more conservative line of play here, just uh, adding more minions to the board. Okay. So I mean, if, even if you get yeah. uh, if you get flame strike here, you have two huge minions to survive flame strike. Uh, mm -hmm. Blizzard obviously will uh, you know stall things out, and that's what we're gonna see. Yeah. What well, just unbelievably annoying about. Uh, the Twilight Drake too is as much as it's high health. I forgot that silencing it puts it to one health, yeah, so it just it becomes is, really easy to pick off. <laughs> yeah, that is a, a a big downside of the uh, of the Twilight Drake uh, in this kind of situation. Though this does put, uh, ooh, oh was, my goodness! I said it, it puts it puts Toyota in range to be able to cast Molten Giant, but Lotheb is a lot scarier. I don't know that he necessarily wants to cast Lotheb this turn, right? Uh, Although he theoretically could play Lotheb, silence his guys with his with his owls, and break his opponent's ice block with Lotheb up, which means that the only thing his opponent can do next turn is play another another ice block, or yes. potentially Frost Nova. Have we we haven't seen both? Have we seen both Frost Novas from Forsen? I believe we've seen only one. Okay. Like, well, I guess actually, if, even if he frost novas, if you've broken his ice block at this point, he'll be at three health. So you could actually, if he frost nova, you'd win with your axis. So yeah, I like now. I like owl book your guys lotheb you because you put you you make it so that your opponent can only cast one spell next turn. Uh, it has to be ice block basically. Right. And, and even if he has ice block, you pop it the following turn. Pop it the next like, turn and play like a heal bot or something. And now you've, your opponent's gone through both of his ice blocks. And there's frost nova. Which Forsen maybe will want to cast rather than the other ice block, but then he will die to Jiraxis. That that feels like unguaranteed, considering that you know Dark Bomb, Hellfire, like all these different ways for you to to die. At the same time, you you know you have to do? think about like what? How am I going to win if I just cast ice block this turn too? You know, if you if you you use your ice block now, you can't you can't actually develop anything else next turn, and you're still going to be at three. So it's 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 definitely a weird spot. It is a weird spot. I think it's a higher likelihood though that you die. Um, like I mean, it's it's a much much higher likelihood because ice block is zero percent chance unless your opponent has plays a Kazan Mystic. That is that is much higher. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> next turn you can. Definitely higher. That you next die. turn. Next turn you actually might be able to even clear with flame strike and then do something else to help stabilize too. It's really hard to say. I mean, he is the safest play is to cast Ice Block. Ooh. Okay. All right. So he's. And he's oh. Nova, he and he's going to die game. to Jaraxxus. Game over. He went for the greedy play. Yeah, I think I think drawing that uh, that Alex Straza made him want to try to find another turn. And I, the thing is, I don't know that he could have won uh, ma making the other play. You know, if he plays Ice Block, like we said, you know, yeah, he can he can survive possibly another turn, but uh, and he's guaranteed to survive this turn. But I don't know that 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 sets him up to be in a better position to potentially win the game. But Toyota does take this down back from a 2-0 deficit, takes it three to two against Forsen, and will be moving on. Yeah, really, uh, really tough spot for Forsen uh, to swallow a, a three-two comeback here for Toyota, but a job well done, and Toyota will be going up, I believe, against Trump. And if he wins against Trump, then he's in the semifinals, guaranteed top four. So a job well done to Toyota, as I think he is the captain of Fate to Karma, so he needed to represent his team strong. Uh, now that it's recently been made, and Cypher is also in the grand finals waiting for his teammate potentially if he can keep going. So uh, that was a really fun series, Kilber. I enjoyed it. Yeah, that, we saw some really cool games there. The the Freeze Mage versus Tempo Mage game was was really you know sort of back and forth. The Tempo Mage with the, the horrible horrible opening, but uh, ultimately yeah. strangely manages to grind out the Freeze Mage, who sees only card draw when it's going to kill him. Yeah, and then getting the Ysera off the Unstable Portal. Not really sure if the Ysera ultimately was like the defining factor, but it was like it certainly helped. Uh, but it to was make awesome. That game interesting. But it was awesome, and it was a dragon, <laughs> so Kibler's happy for sure. Uh, guys, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to continue the playoffs day number two. We're going to have Surrender from Korea up against Strife Crow, who we saw earlier today. And that's going to be a fun match because I believe Surrender is bringing an interesting class in Rogue. So we'll tell you more about it after the jump. Until then, stay tuned and we'll be right back.